Hi friends, so this weekend I was out in Anza Borrego, which is a desert here in South, uh, in Southern California. And I've been going there for a long, long, long time. And I've done photo shoots out there. I've done um, plein air painting and done a lot of uh, what they call primitive camping out there where you're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no bathrooms, there's no nothing. You don't even have cell service. Yes, my, my family freaks out when I do that, but it's so much fun. And I climbed to, this time of year, the prickly pear cactus are blooming. So I took this picture. I had several of them uh, printed at um, Staples so that I could paint them. And I kid you not, they were, this is no filter. They were this bright. Matter of fact, they're so bright that it's really hard to tell where the petals are, which I thought was rather interesting. So all of these, I climbed up to them, sat there, I painted, so beautiful. They matched my brushes, look at this. I mean, is that the exact color or what? And uh, so this one in particular, I am going to paint and share with you. I really loved that it was a little bit on its side. Um, so there you go. That's my reference photo, my my picture that I took. I ad-libbed a little bit here, added a few more little petals. Um, I did use this uh, masking fluid, which I don't normally use, very rarely. Um, I do like this one because it's a fine tip, so I can get a really tiny line and... Um, it says non-clogging on it, but I got a clog halfway through, so there you go. Anyways, I'll probably go in and do some um, white pen or something like that. We'll figure it out when I get there. All right, I'm going to start with a nice wash over my flowers. So, got my brush here. Um... Let's see, I am going to use my favorite palette here, my My Lang palette. And one of you just asked me this, um, the Queen Magenta has always been my favorite. As you can see, that's kind of the color in my um, painting here. Also, the, I almost want to say it, they were so neon, it almost could be a... Um, little bit of opera rose. So I might just put a little bit of that Winsor Newton in my palette, but this is the Rose Matter. So I think that color is very close. I'm gonna get that in my palette here and I'm using the my um, large Meaden palette, which I love. It's just really heavy duty. I definitely wouldn't travel with this, but what I love about it is it's got a lot of wells. They're very deep, and I love the huge mixing area. So I just happened to grab that, and I'm using that today. And then let me see if I can find my upper rose here. One second. So this is my Meaden, my Meaden, my um, Winsor Newton palette. I rarely use these because Windsor Newtons are quite a bit more expensive to use. Um, and unless I'm doing a professional painting, I just use my My Langs, which I love, love, love. So creamy and buttery and rich and vibrant and all my colors are mixed for me. So, but I do want to incorporate some of that uh, opera rose into my painting. So I'll work a little bit with that. And let me just show you how vibrant this is. It's crazy vibrant. So here is Opera Rose. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you guys. Crazy, crazy vibrant. And pretty much almost the identical color. Now this Rose Matter is just a little bit deeper, but they're pretty close. And I bet if we watered that down or added just the tiniest touch, of white, it could almost become that beautiful opera rose. Although when you add white, as you know, it's, um, and this is just a piece, oh shoot, didn't mean to do it on the back of that. 
um, a little bit opaque, which I don't want. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for the opera rose here. Put some of that in my palette. There we go. So it's ready. That'll probably be the majority of my flower. But you'd be fine if you have Quin Magenta or in the My Lane palette. The Rose Matter is absolutely gorgeous. But I really wanted that stunning neon type color. All right. So I'm going to start with first a pale wash over all of my petals here. So I'll just water down that... Um, upper rows so that it's about oh maybe um maybe 50 50 and then i'm going to go in and i do want to preserve just a few white spaces at the tops of some of these so i'm going to leave some of that in there now that is a little bit brighter than what i wanted so i'll just add more water and then I'm even going to go in and just pick some of that up with a damp brush. Like that. There we go. But I do want to leave that white edge because I want it to be a little bit dramatic like the sun coming over the edge. So let's go back into that opera rose. I'm adding more water because I want it to really be diluted. I just want a light wash here. Yeah, that's better. And just start going over a lot of these areas, leaving some of the edges white and with a damp clean brush, I'm softening that line. So this is just, again, that damp kind of base. And then I'll glaze over this. There we go. And just keep going here. I am using such a small amount. I don't know if you can see that. Let me scoot this over a bit. Oops. I'm using such a small amount and so much water in that opera rose because it is quite vibrant. But preserving a lot of these white spaces. And this will dry lighter too because watercolors always dry lighter. So I'm leaving some of these edges white just keep going in picking up some of that paint some of these petals underneath here will be a little bit darker there we go. Just keep going. Keep going. If I knew how to edit, see, I could fast forward through this. Although, to me, it's relaxing to watch this kind of stuff. So I hope it is for you, too. You can always fast forward. So I'm going over that masking. I wish I could have finished, but my little tip broke. But I, you know, I think this will be a good experiment to see the difference between using a masking fluid and using a white pen. So that'll be kind of fun. A little bit more here. My original plan was to mask it all out. So as you can see, it's already drying and it is lighter. Oop. 
because watercolors do dry lighter, which is kind of the opposite of if you're an acrylic painter, it's the opposite. They dry more vibrant. So does gouache. Okay, just keep going here. I want some of these back petals to have a lot of white on them. And then I might even go in if I want to make it really dramatic and add a dark background. That would really make this pop, wouldn't it? Okay. So just going in with the tip of my brush, this is an eight round. And I'm kind of going in with a barely damp brush and softening those edges and back in here. There we go. All right, so I've got my basic um, kind of foundation. Now what I wanna do is go in, and once this is dry, I'm gonna shoot it real quick because it's winter here. Although today it's warm, it's kind of um, cool out. So watercolors don't dry as quickly, which is fine, but for video purposes. Just a quick shot. Oops, that was so bad. Really, you shouldn't go over masking, by the way, with any heat. Just thought of that. It could make it gummy and sticky and not come off your paper so well. So hopefully that isn't going to happen there. And then what I want to do is go into these, um, the base of these petals with just a little bit darker. So here's where I'll use that rose red. And this is about 50, 50, 50 paint, 50, um, water. And I'm going to go in and lay down a wash here. Now I rinse my brush, wipe it off so it's just damp, and go in and just soften that line like that. So I've got this dark coming from the base upwards, and I'm gonna do that again right here. Just going very slow. Just using the very tip of my brush, rinse my brush, wipe it off and go along that edge and soften that line. I'm actually gonna pick that up. There we go. And as you see, it's gonna get darker and darker. So I'll just go in again, just keep going. Right in here. And really, this is a little bit more detailed than I ever do, but that's okay. So I'm going in, softening that line because I really want to do this flower justice. It's so justice. It's so beautiful. Go in here. And now rinse my brush. It's just damp. Blend out that line. There we go. Okay, keep on going. If I can figure out how to fast forward this for you guys, I sure will. Or you can always go forward. Rinse my brush, tap it off, go down into it. I'm wiping off my brush, just blending that line out to soften it. There we go. So I'm getting all these dark areas 
where it goes into the base of the flower. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that matter rose on my palette. Let's go in here. There we go. Wipe my brush off, rinse it. Rinse it and then wipe it off. Blend it out. Soften that line. So I'm in essence kind of lifting in a way. If you've watched my video on um, feathering out too, you could use that technique here. Let's just do that right, let's see. Let's do this, I'm gonna turn my paper here and do that right here. So another way to do this is I put that paint in there, pretty strong pigment, and now rinse my brush, tap it off, and you can just feather like this, kind of pulling it out. So that's another good way to do it. Go in here at the base of my petal, rinse my brush, wipe it off. Now I just barely am going in with the tip of my brush and feathering it out. Uh, let's see, let's go in here. Like that. Just using very light pressure, holding my brush vertical. And now I'm gonna go in with a clean, damp brush and just feather into that. Rinse my brush, wipe it off again, feather it out again, because I want a soft line here, like that. There you go. Go into the base of this one here. Lay down my pigment. and rinse my brush, wipe it off so it's thirsty brush, and feather in. There we go. So that gives you this fun blend. Now I don't want to um, paint over this white area at the tips. I want it to look like light shining through. I'm gonna go into the base here because the center of my flower is darker. <clears throat> so we'll just go in here, rinse my brush, soften that edge, rinse it again, just softening those edges, picking up some more paint here. Rinse my brush, tap it off. There we go. And let's soften this bottom edge here, which will probably be darker in there. Grab a little bit more of my rose matter. that in there. So now we're getting this fun depth. Rinse my brush. Let's go in here. So this is where the mask stick or masking fluid can be very helpful because I just don't have to worry about it. Rinse my brush. Feather that out. Rinse my brush again. Tap it off. There we go. Pick up some more of that pink paint. Might even tap it 
tap in to the very center. Let it spread. And before this dries, I'll need to soften that up a bit. So rinse my brush, dry it off, and feather it out, just with the tip of my brush there. These flowers are so amazing, and you know, they bloom rather quickly, so I'm always kind of sad when they go away. I'm gonna darken that up just a tiny bit. Pick some of that up, just tap in. It is kind of fun with the mastic too. You can, you just see it kind of go around those white spots. For part of this center too, what I might do is add some purple. Matter of fact, let's, or you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of purple. Just the tiniest bit. To deepen that. So it really looks like you're dropping down into that flower and I'm getting some blooms, which I love. So as you can already see, look at how that's coming about. I'm gonna go in here and just darken that center a little bit. And really, I'm just gonna keep working around the flower, glazing and glazing. So I put that down and then rinsed my brush it's just um, barely damp right now and feather it out. Now, if I wanna get rid of that edge, I can just do the same thing, soften it up. So I'm starting to create this wonderful little dark areas that pull you in. There's another one right here. Just using the tip of my brush, rinse my brush, dab it off. Might just soften that a tiny bit. There we go. Oh my gosh, you guys, adding these layers is just creates such a difference immediately. I wanna go in and add in right here. I have to be careful because this is wet right here, so I don't want to touch that. Wash my brush, tap it off. There we go. Oh my goodness. Yay! Oh, I get so excited, you guys, when I get the look that I'm really going for. I, I love that moment. It's so rewarding. It's like, oh, I've done this beautiful flower justice. I'm going to go, I'm going to let that dry actually. So maybe what I'll do, where should I go next? I feel like I want a little bit more purpley color. So, and I'm actually going to soften that line, which is going to cost a bloom because I'm going in with wetter water than what's there. So it creates these barriers and blooms, but that's okay. I don't mind them in my flowers so much. I think they're actually quite nice. And I love the dark, and that's why I intentionally left this white so that it would really stand up, stand out. A little bit of that purple in here, in between these little filaments. Let's clean up that edge a bit. So it's drawing you down in there. Now these petals, on the outside, I'm gonna make just a tad 
darker in hue. So I might even add some purple to that. Maybe a little green, I know, sounds crazy, but the green is going to, number one, unify it with the um, cactus part. And it also is an opposite. So purples and greens are opposite. So if you mix them, it's a beautiful shadow color. So I'm gonna go in here. Gives me this beautiful, dusty, shadowy, purpley pink that I mixed out of the opposites, purple and green. And also when you add in greens or the color of your flowers to your cactus, it really draws them together. While that's drying, what I'm gonna do is go in and create a green wash here. So I've got some green paint here. I tend to go with my sap green Put that in my palette here, maybe a little yellow green. There we go. I hope you can see my palette, maybe not. And this palette's kind of hard to move. Let's see if I can mix it in here. A little bit more water. And yeah, that's the exact green that I wanted. This is my beautiful 16 round. There we go. And look at how beautiful those contrasting colors are together. Just lovely. While this is wet too, I want to go into it with maybe number one, a little bit. Let's mix up a tiny bit of that green with our pink. Let's see, let's find a spot here. Mm. Well, we're gonna do it right there. And I love the blossoms, the blooms. I actually do that intentionally. That's a little bit dark. I'm gonna pick a little bit of that up. And then use a yellowy green along here. Wanted that to look like it had some light on it. Sometimes they just glow. So I'm loving the blue. Matter of fact, what I will do a lot of times is intentionally create blooms. because it looks so organic. There you go. And grabbing some of that pinky green, maybe just adding a tiny bit of that. I noticed a lot of the cactus out there this weekend really did have green, kind of like roses have green in the, I mean, um, roses have some of that pink in the leaves. I noticed that with the cactuses this time too. So adding a little bit of that in. Now I wanna go in and let's create, let's get a dark blue. I'm gonna use Prussian blue. And go in while this is wet and add in some little areas that will be those little thorny things. And I'm doing it while it's wet because I want it to have that soft look. Another thing I could do here is pick up a little bit. I don't wanna to get too dark because I really like the lighter greens. And tap in, I'm gonna get it really wet and just tap in, didn't really want it on my flower. There we go. I wanna get all these different beautiful colors in here. Let 
There we go. I can even go in with dabs of water. Look at that. And get blossoms and blooms going. So, oh my gosh, so pretty. It's so rewarding when I can get what I'm trying to get because sometimes my paintings come out completely different than what I thought they were going to. So this is a win. <laughs> um, let's see here, pick up a little bit more of that rose red. Rose matter, matter rose, I mean, in my lang. Now I got some green in there, so I don't like that. I don't want green in all of it. So I think what I'll do is mix some of my matter rose with that opera rose. And let's go in and add in some more there. So I'm just building the colors, building the colors. Dry brush, dry clean brush. Going in. And I'm trying to kind of notice where there might be some darker streaks. So I notice over to this side, there was some darker. So I might go in there with, and I actually too, just so you know, I left um, my pencil lines in there, which I might not normally do because um, they're quite dark. Going in here. 